Hey, Sneaky Nose back today. Today we're back with Lubuntu 10.10. .10. Now remember, Lubuntu comes with LXDE Desktop Environment, which stands for Light Desktop Environment or Light X Desktop Environment. And it's really, really light, uses low resources, pretty snazzy, ideal for older machines. Now the actual ISO doesn't actually come with much, but if you view it as a distro to build on, we're on the right, right road, really. We're on the real, 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 real right road. So we're going to show you around this one. I've been on the desktop for about a month, month and a half now, whatever. And I've got some stuff. Now you'll see as we go through the menu that I've added quite a bit. As you can see down there, we've got the usual. The further you go down, you see I've got VirtualBox stuck in there for you know, VirtualBox stuff, basically. So it is available and it does work super fine in Lubuntu, because it should do really, because it's Ubuntu based at the end of the day, Ubuntu and Debian, so there shouldn't be no bleeding problem about anything. So if somebody tells you that Lubuntu is just for an old crap machine and doesn't do anything, well they lie, 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 lie. Now in education we've got Child's Play, but I've also got it under games, but it's very nice. If you've got young kids, ideal. I've also put in Atomic Tanks and BYG Foot, which is a football manager game thingy. Now I did used to play it quite a lot, but because of doing loads and loads of other stuff, I haven't played it in ages. So I'll show you how, just how it works quickly. It's just a football manager game. So there's no graphics involved, it's all text and numbers really. But it's quite fun, passes an half hour away, you know, just they don't play all the time. But it's alright. So anyway, you choose your country. Now I'm going to go down and choose West Ham. Now yes, I'm a West Ham supporter. You don't choose to support West Ham, you're born into it I'm afraid. And that's all we're going to say to it, alright? That's no more sayings. Well you choose your league you're going to put in, now at the moment, we might as well be in the conference, so I'll put the conference in. You choose your username, so I'm going to put in Sneaky, because that's my name, because that's my name. Add your user, and basically you can just click on start, and start your game, and go from there. So I'll let it start up and just get in. Now, the first, you've got a sponsorship deal, they're going to give you some money, because obviously you've got to pay your players, and you have to pay this and pay that. If you've played these sort of games before, from back in the day, you'll know exactly what you're looking at. There's all my players how fit they are, how good they are, how crap they are. A lot of crap ones there. Yes. Anyway, <clears throat> and this is the team we're going to play next, blah, blah, blah. That's basically how that works. So that's simple, that's nice. Passes the time away though, doesn't it? Pass the time away. So we're going to go back to games. I'm going to scroll up, get to games. As I said, Atomic Tanks is there. That's quite fun if you just want to do 10 minute stuff. It's just blow things up. Now, Child's Play, on the other hand, is really, really good if you've got little kiddies. My little kiddies use it. Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cough and a cold. Again. Then you get Pong, and you get all different sort of games, and you can choose the difficulties. And it's quite fun, really. Yeah. I've been known to play it myself at times. Not that I can't read or write, but I've been known to do it. So we've got Pinky in the Brain up the top here for all the other little games and stuff like that. In a minute, I'm just about to open one up, and you'll see how we go. So we're going to open this one up. It's just remembering where stuff is, so it's a memory game. So we're going to quickly play one level for you, and we'll see how it goes. So click there, it's birdie, another birdie, but the wrong one. Birdie, birdie, got that right. Birdie, froggy, wrong. Birdie, birdie, right. Frog, wrong. Uh -uh. So another frog, another frog, another birdie, another birdie. Now you think that's really easy? Well it is, but it gets harder and harder and harder and harder as you go along. My little kids love it, mate. It's lovely. I think it's superb dopey. So that's enough for that, anyway. I've got bored of that. So do I want to quit? Yeah, of course I do. Stopping all the timers, because it actually ranks you and keeps all your results as well, so that's quite good. So yeah, I'm going to quit Charles Play and come out of there. That's a nice one, anyway. Right, what else have we got that I've installed? Right, you have to put Gimpy in. Now, we'll come back to this a bit later, but it's not your normal Gimp in there. Oh, no. Chromium is your browser, XChat, Slyfed, and Transmission. Usual. Abbey World and Gene Numeric are for your office stuff here. You don't really need Open Office, but if you really, really want it, you just go to Synaptic and download and load a little baby. And it will be done for you, and you can have it. But I think it's just a too large download for what it is. Plus, LibreOffice is going to be out soon anyway, so you can be able to have a look at that, won't you? You know what I mean? Yeah, we should do. Anyway, what else have got? You've got Open Box Session, that's for your desktop. Now, in sound and video, I've got quite a lot. Now, Aqualung comes with standard, Asunder doesn't. Also, Audacious and Audacity don't either. These are all stuff I've installed on top, like Caden Live, OpenShot, Radio Tray, Record It Now, the Sound Recorder, Xfid Cap. I've actually added them all myself because they're the sort of things I would like to use. Now, Aqualung is just a music player. Now, the problem with this is you can't import any files from within it. So, you can, yes, you can play your DVDs like I am now, so that's nice, isn't it? But it won't really rip any tracks for you, so that's not nice. So, how do we do that? I hear you cry. Well, basically, 
you get rid of Aqualung like that, and you close him down like that. And we go back down to the menu. Oh, by the way, let's close Aqualung completely. It stays open in your tray, I forgot about that. We'll go back down to the menu, excuse me again. <clears throat> back to sound of video, and we're going to open a Sunder up. Now, Sunder has been around for a long, 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 long time, and I've used it on various occasions. I've still got on quite a few distributions that I'm using at the moment anyway, because it's just handy to have. I mean, yeah, I mean, your Riven Box import's lovely. Pretty slow, I thought, but this is a bit quicker. Now, bearing in mind, I'm recording at the same time here. Don't worry about the speed of it. It does go a lot quicker in real life. So, basically, I'm just creating my settings here, where I want the files to go that I'm going to rip. So, I'm just going to send them to my my folder, basically. Then you can change the file names and stuff like that. Now, encode. You can choose to use OG, MP3, variable bitrate, wave all these formats you could wish to do so, you know, and also the CDD databases here as well. So, I'm going to keep it as a and basically I'm just going to rip one track for you. you. Just click on rip, and off we go. Now, I have cut the video here, because you could have been here quite a while. When I say quite a while, I mean quite a while. Because it's just, I'm trying to record at the same time. I'm using XVID cap as well, which takes a lot of resources, and I'm ripping and I'm trying to encode as well, and it's going, help, help, I'm, I don't like, help me. But I can't help it because I'm using it, am I? Stupid computer. Anyway, <coughs> trying to talk to me. I don't think you are. Anyway, back to where we was then. It's now encoded in that one track. In real life, it doesn't. T it takes about a minute, if that, to do a track. So that's not too bad. O obviously, it all depends on what format you're doing it to and what quality. Obviously, the higher the quality, the more space it will take. So it's entirely up to you at the end of the day, isn't it? So anyway, we're ripping away here. Yeah? Excuse me, I'm going to have to take a bit of a drink because I'm really thirsty today. Mm. That's better. Quite a lot better. <clears throat> Not firstly, right? It's almost finished encoding it. In a minute, it will say we're all done and we're done. In a minute. In a minute. Hey, and we're done. And we've successfully created our ripped OG file. So basically, all we're going to do now, we're going to go back down to menu, and we're going to go back down to sound and video. We'll open up Aqualung again. Now this time, we can add a file, can't we? Because we've actually got some tracks that we've ripped. So we go to add a file. The file is in that folder. So we double click there one more time. There's the track in there. Prodigy Fat Land album. CD. Remember, remember CDs? God, man. Blimey, CDs. I love them. Really cheap on eBay now as well. So here it is. You can import it. And so you can use your tracks from there. Now, obviously, you can't keep your CD in the drive. So the more you can import, the better. Or keep them on a flash drive on the other hand, couldn't you? Just put them on a flash drive. And then when you want to use them, you can use them. Nice. If you open it up, it tells you what format it's in. Look. 44, 100, bloody, 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 blah, 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 and all stuff like that. We're done on that. So, yeah. So, as you can see, I've done quite a lot with Ubuntu, and it runs rather nice, actually, I must admit. All days I've installed, not used it yet. Audacity, if you're going to do audio stuff, you really need to get Audacity anyway. It works super fast on Ubuntu, mainly because it's not hardly using anything, is it? Ubuntu's really, really uh, skinny Ubuntu, you could call it, really, couldn't you? Skinny. You could, yeah, skinny, all right. She's on the DVD I've installed as well, and no end player, Caden Live. Now you're saying to me, yeah, well, Caden Live ain't really meant for that, is it? It's meant for top-end machines. I, I beg to bleed and differ. I tell you what, Caden Live runs a lot, lot better on Lubuntu than it does on my Ubuntu installation. And that sounds the same for you. And it even comes up with all the extras, you know what I mean? So, up your bum. So, the next one down is OpenShot Video Editor. Now, this also works even faster than an Ubuntu installation. So, it's... So if you're saying, oh, Ubuntu's this and Ubuntu's that, give it a go first before you slag it off, you know what I mean? So anyway, we'll go down Radio Train, love it. Record it now, not so fond of that one. Sound Recorder, that comes with the name section, but it works fine. XVID Cap I've done because it works nice, and some of the others don't. Now, as you can see from my task manager, I'm just using 140 megabytes of RAM, and none of my CPU. So it doesn't use hardly anything at all. This is why it's so nice and quick, shall we say. Right, now, Gimpy, as I was saying earlier, I've installed the new Gimp, which is 2.6 here, but unlike when you just get Gimp, I've installed quite a few extras, because if you go into Synaptic Package Manager, you will see there are lots and lots of extras for Gimp, like importing raw files, changing raw files, and doing other stuff. So what I'll do, I'll import a picture, one of mine, there you go, down the seaside, down the road from me, down the seaside, the seaside, the seaside, the seaside, I took that, oh, was that last year? I can't remember now. Anyway. One of my pickies. Now, if you go out there, you see I've got Pandora up here. That's to do panoramas. That's another little thing I've put in. Now, as I go down the menu, you will see there's quite a few bits and bobs that is not on your GIMP installation. And you're thinking, where do I get them? 
but I'll tell you in a minute once we've gone through this. Now, Artistic. Movie 300 was a new one on me, so I thought I'd give it a go. These are just little scripts that they've done to see if they work for you. Now, Movie 300, I haven't got a clue what it means, but obviously it's going to change things quite a lot. Now, if you're not recording, unlike me, this doesn't take long at all. It's really, really quick. But as I'm recording at the same time, you know, lag. So it's a bit slow. But don't worry about it. I'm just giving you this as an example. All right? It's an example of what is available here and what you can use. If you really like using GIMP and you want to know how to use it better, head on over to Gimptrix's channel. She's a nice little girlie from the Netherlands. And she knows quite a bit about GIMP. So give her a channel a check out as well. So anyway, we're doing this. Let's see what's happening here. It looks different it, from my original picture. So we'll wait a bit longer. Well, that's different, isn't it? It's artistic here, so I do admit it's artistic. But I don't think I'd want to print that one, really. But hey, it's nice to play around with when using Gimpy and like in photography and stuff like I am. It's really, really nice. So, yeah, that was Mr. Gimpy. So, anyway, we're going to go down to the Synaptic Package Manager. Of course, it wants your password. So, I put my password in. And we wait for the package manager to come up. And here we go. We're nearly there. Hey, so we're into search, and I'm going to put in GIMP, okay? GIMPy, so we head on over to the GIMP bit, when it thinks about it, is. there we go. Now if you scroll down here, you'll see an awful lot of extras for GIMP. There's a known GIMP plugin scan there. Or scan, plugin, should I say. There's one for your printer. There's stuff for importing from Commodore 64 files. There's something for, for direct draw services, so if you've got a tablet, drawing tablet thingy, you can use that. There's stuff for different, different digital cameras. There's an animation package. There's loads and loads and loads of stuff. There's oh, loads. Of, it's loads and loads. It's loads. Blimey, look. There's a UFRO I've put in there for my digital raw files from my camera. Go down a bit further. Some more for the raws and blah, 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 blah. One day they're called Junior Art, but I think that's completely different. But I'll have a look at that another time. But as you can see, there's loads and loads of extras. There's Pandora, which I put in extra as well. I mean, there's loads and loads of stuff. If you put on all these extras, there's not much that Gimp couldn't do at the end of the day, is there? I think it's pretty good at the moment. People slug it off, but hey, what do you want for nothing? Hey, what do you want for nothing? A bunch of cheapskates. Anyway, that's Lubuntu in the day. Now, if you think of Lubuntu as a base distro where you add all your own stuff, right? Just add it as you want to go and add the programs you want to use, you're on the right road. Don't expect it to become with all the stuff you need to start off. Remember that the ISO is under 500. What do you want, man? What do you want? You people, I don't know. Anyway, if some more screen cars go to do lose I can't remember his name now, I'll get his name and I'll put it on the things. Anyway, that is Lubuntu. I like it, you should like it. Give it a go. Sneaky Linux going out. <laughs>